Good afternoon and welcome to Gower Park in Hamilton, Waikato, as we bring you coverage of the National League Championship clash between Melville United, the pride of the Waikato, against Kashmir Technical from Christchurch. Both these teams are struggling for points currently, but uh, this promises to be an intriguing afternoon of action as they seek to press their claims for higher honours and uh, climbing up this table. Let's take a look at how the National League Championship uh, looks today. Birkenhead United and Auckland City FC currently occupying the two slots that guarantee a grand final position. Wellington Olympic are on the climb. And as you can see from this point of view, from a Melbourne point of view, they would desperately love to pick up a victory over Kashmir Technical, who after a great start have dropped away with two defeats in two games. Let's take a look at uh, how the two sides line up. There is good news for Dan Schwartz. His twin brother, Tom Schwartz, is back from long-term injury. He has over 200 games for Kashmir Technical, 159 games for the Canterbury United Dragons, and he will be a major plus for this team as they seek to change their fortunes. The player who drops out of the lineup is Corey Vickers. Up front, Garvin Coughlin, who scored three hat-tricks in the Southern League, will be charged with getting the goals. Lyle Matheson also knows his way about the penalty box, and much will be expected of him. Melville United finished fourth in the Northern League, and uh, they found life at the top just a little bit more difficult than uh, life in the Northern League. Oliver Colotti is the player that they rely on for their goals. And there has been a tactical switch here with Aaron Scott, a veteran of 350 Melville United matches, moved into the centre of midfield alongside Josh Galletley. There are three changes for this uh, team today. Stafford Dowling, Campbell Brown and Liam Hayes are all out. And uh, Braden Coulter Phillips has come in, slotting in at right back. Sean Lidicott has gone to centre back and Raheem Hunter slots in alongside him. Ryan Lawrence partners Colotti in the striking area for coach Sam Wilkinson. I'm Gordon Glenn Watson. I'm uh, describing this game alongside former All-White uh, Harry Nata. Harry, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, very intriguing as you said, Gordy, because both these sides, um, particularly Melville, picked up their first point last week at one or draw against the Phoenix Reserves. And after a, a great start, Catch me technical in their round one, beating Miramar Rangers 4 0. I've suffered two defeats in the last two rounds. So, a lot of work for both Dan Schwartz and, and Sam Wilkinson for their respective sides, but both have got, as you said, uh, uh, interesting um, players coming back in. Tom Schwartz, obviously, from a, a Kashmir technical perspective. And obviously, that tactical change where you see Aaron Scott sitting in that uh, at midfield role uh, with Sean Lidicat uh, moving from right back. Is, historical right back into uh, a centre back position this afternoon. No, Stafford Dowling as well. Um, I've seen him a couple of times this season and he's looked very sharp for, for Melville so perhaps uh, a, a bit more responsibility on the likes of Oliver Colotti and Ryan Lawrence. How do you see that tactical switch with Aaron Scott playing out for Melville United? He's 36 years of age still very uh, capable. Yeah, look, he's a lot of experience. I think you can't beat experience, particularly in and we've seen it for a number of years that uh, Aaron Scott has played, whether it's um, at Waitakere United or here at, here at Melville. Um, obviously former all right as well, so he knows his way around uh, around the park. So does his, his uh, opponent there, his, uh, Tom Schwartz for um, uh, for Kashmir Technical, both very two very experienced players, uh, great leaders too within their own right. So I would see Aaron Scott sort of sitting in that six role and, le and letting in Josh Galletley possibly the uh, charge with, with supporting the likes of Harry Christian Rose on that side and Colotley up front. Well, the referee quartet is uh, led by Luke Gardner and the assistant referees Hayden Tutbury, Jacob Porter and the fourth official is uh, Andres Castro. Luke Gardner was in control of uh, Kashmir Technicals match with the uh, Miramar Rangers back on the 1st of October, that game that finished 4-0 to Kashmir and he has not uh, handled a Melville United game in the National League Championship until today. I was in Christchurch uh, last Sunday and saw in person the game between Kashmir Technical and Wellington Olympic. 
Kashmir have lost uh, quite a few players and although they look quite solid at the back and through the middle all the way up to Garvin Coughlin they seem to suffer in the wide areas although um, to be fair Wellington Olympic were in very very good form that afternoon Galetli, Lawrence and Colotti standing over the ball. Melbourne United seeking a first National League Championship victory on home soil. Luke Searle. Long up, 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 okay. yeah. Played forward play towards Luke Tung. Well, the pitch looks in immaculate condition. The weather looks lovely too. So hopefully that is important for things to come. In between the white lines. Tongue. That's a lovely pass. Sam Richards. Andy Stora. Tongue again, this time a long diagonal ball forward. Early tester for Braden Coulter Phipps, and he's passed it, but it. Uh, Balls to Kashmir. Yeah, good balance at the back also with Schwartz coming in. That natural left-sided uh, defender sitting in the, the pairing. Store up. And also Sam Richards naturally left-sided as well. So good balance at the back for Kashmir technical. Well, Kashmir Technical have only lost two games away from home in league competition this calendar year. They were beaten 4-1 by Christchurch United and, of course, uh, lost 2-0 to Auckland City at Kiwi Tear Street a couple of weeks ago. They were jolly well unlucky, falling behind by uh, one goal to nil and then having a penalty that was saved by Connor Tracy. It could have been so very different for Dan Schwartz's team. Melbourne's home form, if you take into account the Northern League, has uh, been somewhat patchy, although here's uh, Harry Christensen-Rose, technically very good player. Searle, pop forward early. Porter's got uh, the wrong side of Ryan Lawrence. Oh, two good wins by Aaron Scott. Possession now with Melville. Galetli. Interesting ball, it's hung up for Lagos, and that was a decent pass, decent cross, into the box, Kashmir eventually clear their lines. Forward by Sam Richards. This is a promising moment for Jacob Richards. Here's a cut back. First touch was decent and uh, decent defending too. Kashmir have a corner. Lyle Matheson making a nuisance of himself. Yeah, nice cross on the right hand side, Jacob Richards. Matheson just couldn't find enough space to get that shot away, but ended up fortuitously with a corner. towards the far post. It's headed back across by Tom Schwartz. Harris Scott tries to play out Garvin Coughlin with an effort but fails to test Max Tommy. Yeah, a bit sloppy there from Aaron Scott looking to right idea play out from the back but it was just a mistimed pass that was intercepted. Already a couple of tackles for Aaron Scott just further up the park in the opening couple of minutes. So we look to see Josh Galatley pushing forward and, and Aaron Scott just holding that, uh, that 
number six role potentially just in front of Sean Didikit and Raheem Hunter. Well, Melville United's last uh, outing here at Gower Park was very flat. Again, against a Wellington Olympic side that's in good form, I have to be fair on that point, but having watched uh, Melville United during the Northern League, I felt that they could have played a lot better than they did, and they've certainly started uh, with a bit more energy this afternoon. towards the near post, cleared by Kashmir. Oh, and that's one by Lagos, and there's a shot from uh, distance, and it's blocked. Nicely done by Lyle Matheson. Kashmir on the counter-attack. Right on the left and... Garvin Coughlin has won a corner. Matheson to take again. Lapsley heading forward, so too Stora. <coughs> Jacob Richards is there. One and Kashmir Colours lingering on the edge of the penalty box. Goes to the near post and uh, Kashmir win it but failed to test Tommy again. A nice corner too from Matheson, just floated into the near post. Coughlin just off the radar for that one. Definitely knows where the, the goal is. Coughlin scored a bag full of goals recent seasons he's their only goal or has one goal so far and that 4-0 win against Miramar in the opening round yeah he, he scored 25 in the Southern League uh, at uh, a phenomenal rate largely picking on Nomads and uh, Mosgiel three hat-tricks across the Southern section of the National League Championship competition on looking for the run it's dealt with by Raheem Hunter well combative stuff in midfield by Ryan Lawrence he's done very well that's a good pass by Searle oh lovely skill and uh, tidied up just in the nick of time looks like Lapsley yeah, lovely bit of skill from Harry Christensen Rose he just Nutmegging. Jacob Richards, I think it was. Tommy launches it forward, picks out Harry Christensen, Rose, and well, he went for the early ball, trying to entice Ryan Lawrence into a late run. It wasn't a bad idea. Stora, touched on by Jacob Richards, it's getting a bit scrappy but uh, Galetli's picked it up, lovely play between he and Lawrence, Lottie tried to drag back and flick a ball through but it's still with Melville, decent cross in, not bad, not bad at all, Tom Schwartz is uh, remonstrating with somebody there, it was a great cross from Christensen, Rose looking for the far post. She goes in between two Kashmir defenders as well. Ryan Lawrence. Exactly the type of cross that defenders hate trying to deal with yeah, too. It's that one that it, this kid's the keeper come. It's in between that last line and the, and the keeper as well. Decent ball to the far post. It's a free kick.
the gardener in the right position at the right time to make the right call. Yeah, those those sort of angles and those crosses, if they're whipped in with pace, it's quite likely to come off a, a defender's head if they're back peddling to goal. It's sort of questions from the keeper, do I come, do I stay, have my defenders got it under control? <laughs> as, as a former centre half, it, it always becomes a question of why you're letting them put the ball in the box from those areas <laughs> as well. As uh, Coughlin makes a run here, down the left-hand side, uh, Lagos has defended stoutly for Melville. He's beaten two players, now third. Can't uh, beat a fourth, but that won't matter. There's a free oh. kick for Sam Wilkinson's team. Yeah, I think Aaron Scott was, was not happy there because there was some advantage to be played. He just whipped out a nice pass out to this left-hand side. We'll just see the, the ball there from Lagos. It was a lovely pass out to this left-hand side that Harry Christensen Rose had a bit of space. It's actually a smart foul to give away by Sam Lapsley too, given that Lagos had picked up a head of steam. He'd rather be giving away free kicks in, in that area than anywhere else in the field of play. Well, Danny Knight, another veteran of over 200 games for Kashmir Technical, and uh, certainly a part of uh, Kashmir's recent successes, uh, 16 titles in the last couple of years, won the English Cup, the uh, Mainland Premier League and South Island Football Championship, a couple of Chatham Cups as well, and Knight and uh, the brothers Schwartz have been key figures in that success. Raheem Hunter. Oh, and that's a very sloppy ball to give away. Jacob Richards can't uh, capitalise on the generosity of Galletley on that uh, particular occasion. Nicely done by Harry Christensen Rose, and Ryan Lawrence dashes down the left. Andy Story goes out to deal with the danger. Lagos has made a run to the near post. Support arriving from Luke Searle. Decent ball in. Oh, not a bad header, but uh, lacking just a bit of power to test uh, Danny Knight. Yeah, Lagos looking just to flick that one on and help it potentially to the for an oncoming uh, player at the far post. Hunter, former uh, Hamilton Wanderers player. You're yeah, just forcing the pass there, Raheem Hunter, looking for options inside from the midfield, Aaron Scott or Josh Galatley. And it was quite a difficult pass, it had to be spot on. Knight. Clipped over the top of Harry Christensen Rose. It's Jacob Richards for Luke Tung. Store up. Nice pass. Aiden Barber Ryan setting this move in motion for Kashmir. Long range. Well, it looked like a shot, but was uh, more of a cross in the end. Stora into the back of uh, Oliver Colotti, and he's down for the count. Free Again, kick Melville. Yeah, decision making too from, from Melville on that occasion, well, from Kashmir, sorry, on that occasion, because Sam Richards had made a run inside Braden Quilter Phipps just moments earlier. Stay in. Stay in. Stay in. Stay in. Good. 
Phipps. It's uh, gone a long way back into Kashmir territory. Jacob Richards sets another move going. That's a lovely touch by Aiden Barber Ryan. Has he got quality on the delivery? Decent, and it was uh, flicked away just in the nick of time by Melville. And now it's their turn on the counter. Yes, in Lagos. Cool to Phipps. by Josh uh, Galletley. Now Aaron Scott. Hunter. Searle. Galletley decides to play one forward for Harry Christensen Rose, but can't keep it in. Ballard. Lovely turn. Used his body well there to throw the press, uh, throwing the pressing player, the pressing opponent off. Well, both teams are just occasionally guilty of giving the ball away needlessly. Yeah, Melbourne are persisting with this tactic as well. The diagonal ball across over the top. Trying to get Eric Christensen Rose one on one with Luke Tung. Here's Kalotti. Ryan Lawrence is unmarked in the six yard box if Kalotti can find him. Oh, well, he, he managed to get a ball of some kind between two Kashmir players. Unfortunately for he and Melville, it wasn't uh, able to find Ryan Lawrence. Yes, yeah, Sam Wilkinson would be disappointed, but they didn't able to get enough red shirts into the box on that occasion because it was a nice pullback. Just no one there to, to finish, and in the end, it was quite comfortable. Tom Schwartz able to play out from the back. Gillettly for Lagos, taking on Sam Richards and. Can't find a teammate with the cross, unfortunately for him. Decent flick, it was a good kick out from Danny Knight. Might as well play the percentages, it doesn't always have to be uh, passing and possession through the thirds. It's a lovely bit of skill from Lagos there. But once again, yeah, just giving the ball away as well. Yeah. It's the, the turn, both sides are, are really guilty. It's not, uh, but, uh, I, guess, I guess, you know, just that desire to keep the ball and just dictate the tempo of play. I mean, two or three touches and it's given away. More than one occasion from both sides. Or they're looking to get the ball quick forward, you know, quickly, one or two passes, and then it's over the top or into a runner. Lawrence against Stora. The attempted cross uh, took a couple of uh, pinball deflections. Now it's with Kashmir. Matheson. Nice turn by Coughlin under pressure. Yeah, just a bit more composure and patience on the ball from time to time. Wouldn't go amiss from both teams. Yeah, I think it's, it's decision making too, Gordy, you know. I think having the, the composure, as you said, just to take take it take an extra touch. You know, open your body up a little bit more. 
Christensen Rose. Kalotti's made a run in behind Luke Tung. I think that's Lawrence in the penalty box. Aaron Scott was on the edge, and now Kashmir come away through Jacob Richards. Long throw from Sewell. Geez, that's a difficult one for Kashmir to deal with. Hunter's header. Sewell. Testing cross for Danny Knight. Target was uh, Jason Lagos. Well, we've had uh, 20 minutes and not too many incidents of notes in the penalty boxes to talk about. Hunter. Littikit. Long ball played over the top. Spotting the run of uh, Ryan Lawrence. Does well. There's the cross. He had a clear. Better for Melville. And there's uh, an effort that was lacking accuracy, but uh, can't fault the attitude towards that opportunity. Face the game. He headed clear from Kashmir Tetkal. Lovely bit of skill from Josh Galletley. Not so much on the execution on the shot, however, but again, a positive piece of play from him. Well, it's like you said just a moment ago that it's a realisation that uh, the player on the ball has just slightly more time available than uh, they they, they think, initially yeah. think and yeah, it's not it's like it's a chance like that or balls like that where you know it's a it's a decision to just to, to get the ball clear or you know, a bit more composure I think, required from both sides because they, they have got ball players here's Aiden Barber Ryan taking on Searle here's the cutback corner well no it's already out says uh, Luke Gardner Yeah, Aiden, Barbara Ryan there taking on Luke Searle, just running out of room. Kashmir technical player. Luke Searle actually did quite well. He got his body position in the right right place because I think he suspects that Aiden Barbara Ryan doesn't have the pace, the to, pace go to get by him. Yeah, and so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as a defender, you kind of use that goal line as your, as your, you know, as your partner, as your, you know, try and force your, force your attacker to go around you because you know you've got two or three yards and you're out of, you're out of room essentially. Yeah, and it's recognizing the fact that you're not up against a player the quality and speed of uh, Jack Henry Sinclair, who if you give just a couple of yards, he can go by you in tight areas. Smartly done by Searle. Ball that's uh, found Jacob Richards taking on Searl again. There's the overlap by Tung. Is there a target to hit? Good save by Max Tommy. Kashmir players arriving just a moment too late to uh, capitalize off that loose pass, but the initiative is with Kashmir. There's Tung's cross again. Good touch by Matheson. Can't quite get a hold of it, and Galetli. Pops a little pass out for Braden Coulter Phipps. Well, they are getting some uh, some joy on this right hand side the last sort of five or six minutes. Adam Barber Ryan, Jacob Richards. All been involved and it was a great cross as well, wasn't it? Whipped in with a bit of pace. 
Matheson unable to back to goal, just unable to touch it off to Goff. We see the overlapping run here. Swung across, great pace on that as well. Yeah, it was smartly done by Jacob Richards. There was another point of attack that Luke Searle then had more decisions to make with uh, Tung arriving to provide support. Very tidy on the ball, Luke Tung. Nice pass by Richards. Barbara Ryan tried to slip a pass through to Garvin Coughlin. Now it's Sam Richards. Cash, well, that's a good run. Picked out and blocked. Nice touch by Matheson. Pressure still on. Oh, and that was a gift wrapped opportunity. I think it fell to Sam Lapsley. Completely missed the ball. Well, they've got a good spell of pressure, Cashmere. They're sort of just overloading numbers on both sides. This right-hand side earlier we saw in the left-hand side there with Sam Richards and Sam Lapsley. They're just outnumbering Melville in certain areas. And again, that was a, another great opportunity to at least try, get a strike on goal. And they're using the ball a lot more productively too. Here's Richards against Searle. Tongue arriving. Oh, he's managed to fashion a, a cross, but uh, it's an ineffective one. Melville can see the corner. A bit of a nervous clearance there from Raheem Hunter. This goes to show you put players under a bit of pressure. No, Dumac comes down to decision making, doesn't it? An execution technique, that one there on that occasion. Just a bit of a rash clearance. Matheson's corner. Schwartz has met it. Tommy. Max Tommy comes out and collects. Christensen Rose has uh, done reasonably well, but Andy Storer yeah, yeah, yeah. with some uh, very good defending to keep up with him. Sir with a shot. Oh, hits the side netting. Not a bad uh, effort from the Melville United left back. Yeah, it was a very good effort. Miscommunication there between Matheson and Tung. Sir just, he connected well with it as well, didn't he? Lovely strike from Luke Searl. Richards. Well, that's uh, not great from Danny Knight. Pressure back on his team. Bring him back, heavy. Luke Gardner, referee. Bringing together Luke Tung and uh, Oliver Colotti. They don't seem to be paying too much attention. Well, we've seen the Melbourne United prowess from these long throw-ins. There's another one. Can you get that up? Go on, go on. Oh, two Melville players collide at the same time and now the initiative is with Garvin Coughlin and Aiden Barber Ryan will Coughlin need him and oh. it comes to nothing in the end but uh, that could have ended up a lot worse for Melville United yeah, that had worked out very well for Melville United didn't it because giving Coughlin time and space in that sort of area See, Barber Ryan making the, the run to the right in the end, it was a, it's a tepid shot, wasn't it? 
lap sleep. Well, Garvin Coughlin was pretty unselfish in that moment too, and I just wondered whether or not he would be selfish to, to have a shot himself, have a pop, yeah. given his uh, goal scoring record in Kashmir Colours. Tongue. Lyle Matheson popping up on the right hand side. Coughlin takes on Luke Searle, takes on uh, Galetley as well, beats uh, another couple of Melville players, but Aaron Scott in the right place at the right time to deactivate that move from uh, potential bother. Oh, Luke Tunk's taking a big risk. Colotti has gone past Stora. There's a shot. Good save by Danny Knight. But Kashmir switched off. A lovely strike too. Not sure what happened Robert with Andy Colotti. Stora there. Yeah. It's a lapse of concentration maybe. Yeah, play round again. Play round again. A couple of chances at both ends, Gordy. I think we're edging closer to that first goal, hopefully. Bring a bit of life into this one. Here's Lawrence. Good run, Harry Christensen Rose with the cross. Oh, that was a great save. It was a good, good touch from uh, Oliver Colotti. But that was brilliant goalkeeping. Yeah, lovely bit of play. Ryan Lawrence to send up Harry Christensen Rose. A great, great touch too, wasn't it? From Oliver Colotti and equally. Next Tommy. Also we got a my gosh down here with a looks like an injury. Well I was saying uh, just a moment ago, it was very unusual to see Harry Christensen Rose go past Andy Straw. He looked like he was carrying uh, possibly an injury there and this seems to confirm that suspicion hope it's not too serious uh, for Dan Schwartz it was a magnificent save too was it, again wasn't it from Danny Knight just yeah. right place right time great reflexes to keep that one out yeah Kalotti made a great connection which yeah. means that what Danny it needed Knight's was a touch a, wasn't it just to yeah. use the pace off the cross to or just needs to be guided onto goal, but Danny Knight was up to it. Well, look for a goalkeeper as well. It's one thing to get your hand to it, but you've got to have strong wrists yeah. as well. And he he had just enough to keep that ball out. Well, the Wellington Phoenix are in action tonight at uh, seven o'clock, live on Sky Sports Seven from Newcastle, taking on Newcastle Jets, round three of the A League, 2022-23 season. So the draw for the FIFA Women's World Cup Australia New Zealand tonight. 2023 at the Otea Centre from 7:30 p.m. The Football Ferns will discover who stands between them and uh, World Cup glory on these very shores next year. Phipps with a decent throw. It's uh, taken a deflection, but uh, safely into the hands of Knight. So. Well, both teams yeah. not averse going long at different times. Yeah, Melville. Melville definitely con consistent with that ball down this left hand side. Luke Tun over the top looking for Christensen Rose in behind Luke Tung. Tommy, 
Well, let's draw him back. Back in action for Kashmir. Be interesting to see if he could get through to half time. Coughlin is possessed by Galetli, forward by Searle. Christensen rose header for Colotti, but Tung intervened at just the right moment. This is the challenge from Galotli. Just knocking that past Alex Ballard. Nice bit of skill. Galetli. Sean Lidicott. It was a tight ball to give uh, Quill to Phipps. Aaron Scott. Lapsley. Tongue. Launches it long, seeking uh, Jacob Richards, but uh, can't locate him. Yeah, both sides just, just implying that more direct route at the moment. This stream playing straight out from the back and getting the ball quickly forward over the back of Luke Tung, namely on this left-hand side for, for Melville. Searle. Well, Galetli's uh, been a bit casual with receiving that ball. And now the space here for Jacob Richards. Oh, that's a fine finish by Jacob Richards. And it came from a Melville United mistake in midfield, but there's no doubting the quality of this volley. What a beautiful strike from Jacob Richards. All the work, lovely ball of the outside of the foot from Coughlin. The first touch actually set him up. It wasn't the best first touch, but it kind of bounced the, obviously the, the bounce of the ball invited him to, to strike that one first time. No chance for Max Tommy. I don't think Sam Wilkinson will be very happy with the way that Melville United gave up uh, possession there. Even they were caught, they were caught out of possession too. I, I guess from a from a positional play at the back, there was big holes on this right hand side for Jacob Richards. Coughlin found him with a nice ball with the outside of his foot as well. Christian. Christensen Rose taking on uh, Luke Tung. Decent ball in. Again, no takers at the far post in red. forward by Max Tommy to halfway lashed forward straight back to Melville United and Stora's header finds Lapsley now Tom Schwartz well read by Luke Searle Tongue for Matheson. Here's Coughlin. Little give and go with Matheson. And there's the cross. Chance again. And oh. lashed high over the top by the player who opened the scoring just a minute ago. A beautiful bit of work by Coughlin and Matheson to tee up Richards from about seven yards. And pressure from Christensen Rose as well but gee 
he had a touch to could have had a touch to bring it inside onto his left. Christensen Rose had committed himself. I think uh, Gof Gofflin up front just for for Kashmir. Just I think that's he, for me. He's been the difference in the first half. Just a little bit of quality in and around the box. The guile, the uh, he can pick a pass. It's looked very dangerous at times, particularly when Emma Matheson have had the ball and Richards on the right hand side here. He's not blessed with a great deal of pace, but his spatial awareness is, as you say, yeah. you know, he's got loads of guile and he draws players out of position and uh, can cause all sorts of havoc. Certainly, Kashmir might look at this and feel they should be 2 0 up. Oh, and a late challenge by Aaron Scott on Aiden Barber Ryan. No card. Barber Ryan was, uh, you see the space in front of him there. He just towed that one past Aaron Scott. Short's pass was an awkward one for Seal to deal with. Now, Coughlin. Working some space and can't quite excavate it beyond uh, Searle. Operation shut down by the uh, Melville United left back. Here's Scott. Searle. On that right foot, he does like to use Christensen Rose cuts in field well, he uh, was trying a shot there I think it's uh, hoisted away by Kashmir Hunter with the header Christensen Rose picks out Ryan Lawrence here's Galletli nice pass to uh, Jerson Lagos Galletli showing well, showing some skill. Stop it, stop it. Six break half, dancing one, his way to a handball there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, again. Six well, he did half. outdo himself on that occasion. Just trying to turn, trying to find his way past Alex Ballard. He out twisted himself, I think. a shot and that was not too far away Max Tommy thought enough of it to uh, make the attempted save there's Coughlin again side on goal it looks like the things that might have been a deflection on the way through it was a deflection that kept it out of uh, Max Tommy's net perhaps here's uh, Matheson with the corner to the far post to Schwartz is there He's always a threat from set pieces. Tom Schwartz. Lovely ball too from Matheson. Floated to the far post. Raheem Hunter doing enough to challenge Tom Schwartz. Lagos, decent pass, nice touch by Clotty for Lawrence, there's uh, an extra player arriving in the shape of Harry Christensen Rose but it was uh, Danny Knight who was ultimately tested by Lawrence's shot from range, corner. Well, a good chance and a nice bit of work from Ryan Lawrence here, yeah, Christensen Rose outside him but chose to, chose to strike on target. 
Knight doing enough to push that one round for a corner. Yeah, it was a nice strike by Ryan Lawrence. Here's the corner, it goes to the near post. It ends up with Garvin Coughlin on the left-hand side. Aiden Barber Ryan is arriving and Coughlin plays for the throw and gets it. Well, two minutes of additional time minimum. Added on by referee Luke Gardner and his uh, match official quartet. Here's Colotti taking on Sam Richards. Lagos to the near post, away by Stora. Melbourne would dearly love to equalise just before the break. They can get the ball in. Hit it away by Stora. Here's the shot by Galetli. Took a deflection and an unmarked Colotti can't beat Danny Knight from inside the six-yard box. Well, again, it's just a bit of awareness from Oliver Collotti because I think he had, probably had more time than he thought there. In the end, it was uh, easy pickings for Danny Knight, but uh, probably the, one of the better chances of the half for Melville. Yeah, it has to go down as a missed opportunity by any measure. He lunged at it, and Danny Knight didn't really have much to deal with in terms of uh, power. Type of chance that uh, a Melbourne United uh, player of the past might have enjoyed having uh, someone like a Mark Cozzi or a Stephen Holloway. Darren Fellows. Darren Fellows, yeah. Dash if you're out there. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, he also played for Hamilton Wanderers and uh, Waitakere City. Darren Fellows. Well, we've had uh, the two minutes. As Galetli swings us into the box, it's uh, headed clear. And that will be the final act in a first half that was at times uh, difficult to watch. But uh, we have a goal. Came through Jacob Richards on 38 minutes. Kashmir may feel that uh, they should be 2-0 up. But uh, equally, Melville United had a case for a goal of their own. The Oliver Colotti miss. Halftime at Gower Park. It's Melville United nil. Cashmere Technical 1. Well, the National Women's League Round 6 took place on uh, Friday evening with the game between Eastern Suburbs and Auckland United. Suburbs were in superb form and took the lead very early. A deflected goal after three minutes for Nicole Cooper. Taylor O'Brien doing some good work here. Nicole Metham tees up Nicole Cooper. A little deflection perhaps of Jess Philpott, the Auckland United skipper. 1-0, three minutes in for the Lily Whites. Auckland United, high point of the season was, of course, the victory in the Kate Shepherd Cup. But since then, they've had a number of players uh, pull out of uh, the picture. And Eastern Suburbs were ruthless in the way they set about taking this Auckland United team apart. Taylor O'Brien was in very good form. Uh, testing the goalkeeper, Jesse Barnard, and... 
The second goal arrived, Erin Awong drew the defender towards her, popped the ball into O'Brien. We got the better of Georgia Martin. There's the cut back and a lovely finish by Meta. Erin Awong's header was uh, well timed, but look at the skill from Taylor O'Brien, the goalkeeper. Nearly, very nearly kept it out with the second second dive. Bree Johnson had this opportunity to pull Auckland United back into it, but uh, miscued at the vital moment. She led the line bravely all evening, with Auckland United only having two substitutes for a squad of uh, 13. That was Taylor O'Brien's pass for Ella Finley. Lovely work from Eastern Suburbs on the counter-attack. Five players involved in the build-up that resulted in that shot. United uh, struggled to deal with Eastern Suburbs' constant pressing. Jennifer McMurray just switched off in this uh, moment, and that allowed Taylor O'Brien to cut back onto a right foot, and look at that for a ruthless finish. Goalkeeper had no chance. Eastern Suburbs well on their way to victory and retaining their spot at the top of the National Women's League table. Look at O'Brien here, just uh, showing perseverance, tenacity, and as I said, ruthlessness. Look at this. Bang, goal. Suburbs defending was uh, equally as good as some of their counter-attacking. And uh, they made life difficult for Auckland United all the way to the end. Amy Atkins had a great game out on the left for the Lily Whites. As we have a look at uh, that cross from Rebecca Van Dort, it ended up with Jade Paris. Picked out a teammate and another shot reigns in on the Auckland United goals. So, Harry, uh, Eastern Suburbs looking every bit, uh, perhaps champions elect. 5 0 over Auckland United. You called the game between Western Springs and Northern Rovers. Yeah, look, Western Springs is too strong again for Northern Rovers. They've 100% record, as you alluded to, with Eastern Suburbs. Obviously, Northern Rovers and, uh, and Western Springs uh, kick off on Monday. But again, yeah, look at those two sitting on top, clear out and out, uh, heads and head and shoulders against the uh, against the rest of the the chasing pack. There, Rovers and Canterbury United doing their best to stay in touch. And there, Broad Century United still to, to register a point as well. Well, Friday night's fixtures reverse uh, on Monday, so we're going to uh, again see whether or not uh, Northern Rovers can pull back that eight-point gap. It's looking increasingly unlikely given the form of the top two. Yeah, they were missing two key players, Estelle Harrison and Michaela Foster in the middle of the park. And Western Springs were just far too strong. Patterson. Wayward pass, Hirano accepts that on that occasion. Garcia, Hirano now, one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Hirano. Oh, great footwork. And it's, and it's in. It is a goal <laughs> from Hirano. Well, th thought that one must may get away from her, but she did choose to find the back of the net on that occasion. Lena Hirano. So a bit of pressure playing off for Western Springs. Pressure two from Jackson. Here she is again. The second chance and yeah. in the goal. Suburbs have struck straight back against Northern Rovers this afternoon. Devin Jackson. Yeah. One on one with Uda really does well. And on target. What a strike. Petra Buick. Fantastic strike. What a run from the substitute. I really deserved two. She's been quite uh, like a star for Canterbury when she, since she's been on. Trying to force things. What a fantastic strike by her. Settling here. Yoshida. 
again. Opens it, opens body up so well. Allows her to play that one first time. A shot from Yoshida, and it's a goal. Michaela Foster could not get that to that one. And Saki Yoshida, the third goal for Eastern Suburbs this afternoon. Well worked goal from Yoshida. Oh, lovely turn. That's beautiful from Feinenberg. And she released the pass. She does to Colpi. Best football of the match so far. To the uh, edge of the penalty area. And that is yeah. the best goal of the match. And that is superb. Tafaru with the finish. But beautifully crafted. And it all started with Emma Peinenberg. What a turn in midfield. And releasing Colpi. And again, she found a teammate with the cross. Well, some uh, very impressive goals scored there. And we can take a look now at uh, the leaderboard for the Women's National League. Taylor O'Brien, 10 goals for Eastern Suburbs. Callie Brown, Northern Rovers, 7. Rena Hirano, 6 for Western Springs, alongside teammate Jess Innes, who's on 5, alongside Devin Jackson of Eastern Suburbs. Uh, Harry, you've, you've seen quite a bit of this league. Uh, some great goals there. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think... I think Kelly Brown against uh, Western Springs had ran tirelessly up front, but uh, they just wouldn't be able to get any clear-cut chances for her. Um, Irina Hirano um, and, uh, and Jess Innes at a Western Springs, two very good players out in the middle of the park with you know, Emma Peinenberg's another one to watch for in that uh, return game on Monday, Gordy. But uh, a lot of nice goals too scored across the, uh, across the competition so far. Well, a couple of Football Ferns international matches are coming up in November, November 12th and 15th. They take on uh, Korea Republic in Christchurch at uh, Orange Theory Stadium. And, uh, of course, the FIFA Women's World Cup draw for 2023, July next year, takes place tonight at Aotea Square. And uh, the Football Ferns will find out who stands between them and World Cup glory on home turf. City are both lucky, but uh, they still give possession away. Yeah, so shooting opportunity, deflection oh. just hits the post, and on the <laughs> rebound they scored early. This is a stunning opening from Birkenhead, and it's their captain Sam Burfoot who scores. And it seems incredible after just three and a half minutes to say that it's been coming, but it has. <laughs> and uh, Rappel has managed to find his way past one opponent. Got uh, Wilkinson just to his left, who's lined up the shot. Oh, oh that's goal. a fine finish. What a goal by Eddie Wilkinson. Set up by Rabuka. Christchurch back in business. And here is Tade with Howison sweeping forward. This is looking likely here for Auckland City. Now it's an early ball in, and there is the goal, beautifully done. Ryan De Vries opens the scoring. Superb combinations from the attacking trio. Dylan Hobson with the corner kick. Flips into the near post, and it's won by Birkenhead, and it's in the back of the net. It's Dino Boraka. The home side sees the initiative. Just before the hour mark. To the delight of the Shepherds Park crowd. Gully on to the right foot. Beautiful pass. Jack Henry Sinclair's on side. Nice goal. That's a brilliant finish by Jack Henry Sinclair. One of the most exciting players in the National League Championship. And Wellington Olympic double the lead. Tade. Heavy first touch, maintains possession. Tade, near post, oh, what an yes. equaliser! Emmy Tade, you are a magician! Well, Kashmir Technical leading by a goal to nil at Gal Park over Melbourne United. They've been with their lead, Garvin Coughlin has led the way, but uh, Melbourne United uh, have also created one or two chances 
of their own. And a game that uh, struggled to see too many chances in the opening half hour or so. That was uh, Harry Christensen Rose cross for Oliver Colotti. Luke Searle whipped uh, this opportunity in for Jerson Lagos. He couldn't find the target. And Aiden Barber Ryan going past uh, Raheem Hunter. There's a cross. Couldn't quite pick out Garvin Coughlin, who was waiting unmarked at the far stick. And Josh Galletley setting himself up for this volley, which he could not keep under control. Jacob Richards was causing all sorts of uh, nuisance moments for Melbourne United down that right-hand side. Max Tommy had to get down to save that Luke Tongue opportunity, but Garvin Coughlin, of all the players you'd expect to lash that ball into the back of the net, uh, it's definitely him. Luke Searle had a pop from distance, struck the side netting. But uh, Melville got into all sorts of bother. Raheem Hunter and Josh Galletley colliding. Garvin Coughlin may have been a bit more selfish here. He elected to pick out a teammate in uh, Richards, and he couldn't find the target. Well, Harry, what does Melville need to do to get back into this game? Yeah, well, they've had some half chances in that, uh, as we've seen, Gordy, but they just haven't had the quality in and around the box to really give Danny Knight any any issues. We saw the obviously the, the lovely strike from Oliver Colotley that uh, Danny Knight sort of palmed away with one hand. But uh, it's been all, uh, all the, I guess, the, the better chances have fallen to, to Kashmir Technical with, I guess, the... The key catalyst for me up front was being Garvin Coughlin. But are there changes that uh, Sam Wilkinson will need to make in the second half? They're now chasing the game. You know, Aaron Scott's obviously playing in that uh, that holding midfield role. Sean litticate has been moved from right back into the into central defence. So they have had some a couple of subtle changes. No Liam Hayes as well in the middle of the park for Melville. So see what kind of they can do in the second half. Yeah, Stafford Dowling's a big miss, as, as you said at the top of the show. Always looks busy. He's, he's always he, looking for the ball, trying to make yeah. things happen. And uh, if you have a day like today where Oliver Colotti has had two chances, one yeah. was brilliantly saved by the keeper and the other he should have done better, then it falls to other players and the team to come up with... Uh, the goals and that just hasn't been the story for Melville in their first three games of this National League Championship season. He's definitely looked like a player that can make things happen. Stafford Dowling, similar to that of Ed Wilkinson, Christchurch United. Well, speaking of the National League uh, Championship, other matches being played today in round four. Wellington Olympic and Birkenhead has just kicked off. That is a massive game, absolutely massive. If uh, Olympic can pick up a win, then what currently looks like a two-horse race will turn into th a three-horse race. Rupert Kimi's team has shown great form in recent weeks, winning 4-0 here at Melville on this very same pitch. And uh, they were 3-0 winners over Kashmir last week in Christchurch. Well, Galletley just held on to the ball. He's earned a free kick. <laughs> There's nothing else to say about that. It was pretty obvious, wasn't it? Oh, the other match that's happening uh, kicks off at 3 o'clock. Christchurch United against the Wellington Phoenix. And depending on how results go, a victory for Christchurch United would uh, pique their interest in the race for a top two finish. Matheson. Barbara Ryan dispossessed, nicely played by Galletley. And uh, Barbara Ryan in there too. And it's been 
picked up by Cashmere. Ballard doing the hard work here. Now Coughlin cuts inside on the right foot and offside. Well, frantic start to the second half. Coughlin. Schwartz. Now, well, offside. And Coughlin again, just, he loves to drift wide, particularly on this left-hand side, and he, when he gets the ball, he does, as you said earlier, Gordy, he doesn't possess a lot of pace, but the goal to cut inside and to, to link up with players, one-twos around the box. Yeah, he's a very smart player, Garvin Coughlin. Well played by Christensen Rose. Uh, Lidicott tried to pick out uh, Lagos, but Sam Richards got involved. Now Coughlin, well played by Aaron Scott. And uh, that's a pretty decent pass by Scott for Lawrence. He's got a bit of pace here and goes to the near post. And Danny Knight makes the save comfortably. Well, that's been, been their tactic for most of the, the game, actually. Boards in behind Luke Tung. In the end, Ryan Lawrence is an acute angle to try and beat Danny Knight at his near post. Really, it was the only option he had. There weren't really a lot of runners coming in to... He had the chance to try and pull that one back, but side on goal. You're not begrudge if I'm shooting. Well, Wellington Olympic 1 0 up. Two minutes into their game with Birkenhead United. The other two matches uh, taking place in round four occur tomorrow. They are Miramar Rangers against Auckland United. Kicks off at 1pm. And Auckland City taking on Napier City Rovers at 2pm. It's uh, Napier City Rovers' first trip to Kiwatia Street in National League business for 28 years. As uh, we see Coughlin trying to pick out uh, goal scorer Jacob Richards and uh, not doing so. the uh, Napier City Rovers team that featured Chris Jackson among many others uh, Paul Halford former All Whites they were certainly a quality team yeah. Napier City Rovers dominated the national competition for many many years yeah Jason Yu was another yeah Perry Cotton uh, oh, lovely skill yeah. lovely goal Garvin Coughlin Prizes Melville open and finishes with uh, great aplomb. 53 minutes gone and Kashmir have their second goal. Well, just too much space in this sort of area for Gavin Coughlin. We see just a lovely one-two with Carl Matheson. And that's what he can do from that sort of angle. Quality strike from Gavin Coughlin. Well, Kashmir have a player down and uh, could 
possibly have uh, this opportunity to make the substitution, but what a goal that was. Uh, Raheem Hunter was in all sorts of trouble when Coughlin got on that ball. Didn't know whether to stay or go, chose to go, yeah. played in behind and some punished. Of the, some of their positional play at times at, at the back, Melville, they, they, they tend to get pulled out of position, uh, uh, you know, really easily. It's, their, it's just their lack of discipline at times and their awareness what's around them. Well, looks like Luke Tung is a player that down for Kashmir. Galetli clipped in towards uh, the six yard box and capably claimed by Knight. Let's not forget they've had a couple of changes at the back as well with from a Melville side perspective. You know, Aaron Scott sort of been pulled and been pushed into that midfield role. Sean Liddicketts kind of usually at, at right back being pulled into the central defence. Well, Tung is back in the action. Here's uh, Barbara Ryan. Raheem Hunter got there first. Well, what does Sam Wilkinson do from this point? Uh, does he persevere with Aaron Scott in midfield, or does he not change anything? Well, there's definitely got to be some. I just heard it. There's got to be some changes. So there's. Sounds like there's some double changes here for Sam Wilkinson. So he has to try and change something. Sam Wilkinson, so gone, he's gone to his bench. Yeah, they've certainly got to start taking yeah, taking some risk and taking some calculated risk and getting players forward, putting some pressure on Kashmir Technical. I mean, Kashmir Technical now, you know, they they quite quite happy. Can it's about you know the next ten or fifteen minutes for them, they can quite happily just stay organised at the back. Let's just defend a little bit deeper. And they've got the, the, the likes of Matheson's pace up front as well to catch Melville on the counter attack at times. Well, Harry Christensen, Rose, and uh, Braden Quilter Phipps are the players who have come out. Campbell Brown and Quinton Kaipara are in. Campbell Brown, we saw playing as a left wing back against uh, Wellington Olympic a couple of weeks ago here at Gower Park. And uh, Kaipara also started that game but came off injured. He's more often than not uh, visualised in midfield, former National League player with uh, Hamilton Wanderers. Here's Brown taking on Luke Tung. He's got some pace here. Has he got product? He's got a corner. So the substitute making uh, an impression early on. He's come through the Melville Academy as well. Campbell Brown. Yeah, good start. Good early touches and positive play from Campbell Brown. To, that's what they have to do more of. And perhaps that's what he's been challenged with from Sam Malcolmson is to you know, be aggressive, get, get yourself forward. Put some pressure on Luke Tung, get him running towards his own goal. Wow, <laughs> you talk about guile. Goodness me, that was uh, that was uh, clever again. Yeah, just invited the user's body well, didn't he? That slightest touch from Quinton Kaipara. Just eases the pressure on technical in terms of how, when they're pushing out from the back. Schwartz, Sam Richards on his left foot, can't find a teammate and uh, Jacob Richards has a lash at Max Tommy without success. Aaron Scott, Hunter.
Kaipara. Decent corner. Karen Scott can't quite reach it. Galitli can. Searle with a long throw. It's helped on. Oh, and Danny Knight can't keep it out. And Melville United have a goal to save it. It's uh, Ryan Lawrence, I think, who will claim it. Well, it looks like they just fell asleep at the back. Cashmere Technical. Stora, Schwartz all looking at each other. And Ryan Lawrence ghosted in there to just nudge that one over the line for Melville. So it is uh, Ryan Lawrence, and we have a game now at uh, Gower Park. Dan Schwartz will be disappointed with the uh, manner of the defending from Kashmir Technical, but uh, Sam Wilkinson has made a couple of changes and found a way back into this match. Well, they just looked like they switched off for that throw-in. Did Kashmir. And credit to, uh, to Melville taking full advantage of that. Well, it should also give them a big, big lift in terms of incentive and motivation because uh, if Kashmir Technical are capable of switching off once, perhaps they could, they'll do it again. Home side, building momentum. Here's Lagos against Sam Richards. Oh, and the shot is uh, parried by Danny Knight. It was an awkward one for the Kashmir goalkeeper. Barbara Ryan. Oh, this is good from uh, Kashmir. Late challenge in a very, very vulnerable position for Melville. The card is He's coming off. out. He's and off. it's a red card. I think it's Campbell Brown, the substitute. I think he was deemed he was the last man from the looks of things from Luke Gardner. Is, I think Sean Liddykit's really having a go at Luke Gardner. And Liddykit's got a yellow card for his, for his words. I think clearly Gardner is deemed. Campbell Brown is the last man there. We see just a red shirt just in the, uh, the the bottom of your left side of your screen there, retreating back. So possibly a hard decision for for Melville, particularly they've got themselves back in this game. Is Sam Richards really the player who's going to take that ball further in and score? I'm uncertain, but Sean Lidicott, the centre half, felt that he was he was close to providing cover to Campbell Brown and Brown, who came on and made an impression about four minutes ago, has had a very very short shift. Tongue lines us up for Kashmir Technical, a chance to re-establish a two-goal buffer. Matheson. Off target. He did it well to get it over and down to Luke Matheson, but just not on target. What a blow for Melville. Climb back into the game, do all the hard work, and now red card. Down to 10 players. Yeah, just unfortunate because they were starting to get some momentum. They were starting to build some intensity and some confidence after that goal to get them back into the game. Yeah, and just an unfortunate decision. I mean, potentially, as you said, you've already had Sean Liddykett, sort of the man coming across. Oh dear, I mean, that's, that's completely unnecessary. I wonder what Luke Gardner's interpretation of that will be. That was daft. There's no other word for why it. why he needed to make a tackle. Unless you think it was going out for a corner. Well, or even then, that was interesting to see that one again because it was just a... It'd be, it'd be great to see this one again. Just to have a look at this. It was 
the ball just to go rolling over the sideline. And I guess it was nowhere near the ball. It's the complaining about that being pulled up for it that's astonishing. And particularly given they've just gone down to 10 players. What Melville need more than anything right now is to just have some composure, play relaxed and not be emotive and reactive. And uh, Lagos was uh, perhaps fortunate that he did that so close to the red card because Luke Gardner is a very smart referee. He's highly unlikely to take punitive action against Melville for that, although he could have. Searle, Kaipara. That's well played by Kaipara under pressure. This is uh, not bad from Melville, but they just can't make the ball stick at the feet of Lawrence. Tom Schwartz. Colotti. Here's Lagos. And uh, stabbed out for a corner. Well, midway through the second half, Melville United 1, Kashmir Technical 2. Kaipara. Decent corner in, just over the top. Big, big moment in this game for Melville United. Somehow that ball stays out. It was a lovely floated corner from Kaipara. I think it was Raheem Hunter there. Oh, Luke Searle. He's getting their head to that one, just over the bar. A lovely delivery from Quinton Kaipara. It's a second chance to for another one. Goes near post, oh. but uh, Luke, the Luke, worst Luke, version <laughs> possible. Disappointing, wasn't that one? Yeah. They really needed more quality the second time around, but they still have time. Uh, Melville, more than enough of it. 24 minutes. And uh, Kashmir Technical have shown that they can, from time to time, be vulnerable from these set plays, the long throw ins in particular, and these corner kicks. One by Lidicott. Tongue. Knight. One by Sean Lidicott twice. Now Galetli. Lawrence helps it on. Melville coming forward. Here's Colotti. Well, you can't blame him for having a pop from there. Yeah, I think uh, Danny Knight will be happy for Colotti to take uh, take aim and strike from that sort of distance. It's a yellow shirt's in front of him. Yeah, maybe a slight deflection off Tom Swartz as well. Oh, lovely footwork from Lagos. He's overcooked uh, things and Cashmere have a free kick. He did so well early on there. I guess and then just ran into trouble. That's not a bad pass, and Lawrence has retrieved it. Colotti racing into the area. Kaipot has gone down in a bundle, but is back up. Popped over. Knight has got something on it. Colotti and Danny Knight has the ball in his arms and uh, says he's all right, but this was an interesting moment for Melville. Yeah, nice bit of work from Ryan Lawrence, just getting that one back from the, from the, from the goal line. Source, source, source can't move. Source can't move. Come on, let's go, let's go. 
Well, there's a head knock. Yeah, come in, come in, come in. And it's Garvin Coughlin, the recipient. I'm sure he's had a few of those in the League of Ireland <laughs> before. Maybe one or two. Is it Sean Liddykit? It is. Yep, the hitter, yep. Some uh, action coming your way in the National League Championship tomorrow. It's Miramar Rangers against Auckland United. One o'clock live on Sky Sport next. Really big game for both clubs. Auckland United want to be involved with the grand final. Miramar really need to restore some self-belief. Pick up some points yeah, because they, they haven't done it yet. Picked up, I think their first point with a draw with Napier City Rovers. Maybe I think it was last week or the week before. Not used to seeing the club member Rangers down the, towards the foot of the table, though, Gordy. No, and it was this uh, Kashmir team that set that ball in motion with that 4 0 win over Scott Hale's team uh, back in the first week of October. I'll send him down Lapsley. Nice pass for Aiden Barber Ryan. Now Coughlin. Taking on Raheem Hunter. Oh, it's wasteful from Coughlin. And from Melville. On diagonal ball. It's a good one. And Aiden Barber Ryan forces a save out of Max Tommy. It was a great touch, too, from Barber Ryan to bring that one down. And still with. Uh, Jacob Richards and Melville doing their best to try and end their interest in this game with some self-destructive uh, defending. They've conceded a corner. Yeah, that was a lovely touch from Barbara Ryan to bring that one down. To Jacob Richards to working hard, trying to find himself a yard of space to strike on goal. Somebody just got some little bit of there. Well, Dan Schwartz about to make a change. We'll bring news of that to you shortly as the Kashmir corner is flicked away. Jacob Richards with the throw. Here's Coughlin on the other foot, left foot this time. Andrew Storer had stayed forward, and I suspect that will be the last he is involved with this game. He picked up what looked like a knock towards the end of the first half, and Dan Schwartz is throwing in striker, 18-year-old uh, Kian Donkers, who finished top goal scorer at the OFC Under-19 Championship in Tahiti in September, playing alongside uh, Oliver Colotti, incidentally, for Darren Baisley's team as they romped to qualification for next year's FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Indonesia. 12 goals in 15 games for Kashmir during the Southern League season. And also picked up a goal in the victory over Miramar Rangers as Matheson shows interest in that through ball. Here's Hunter. Oh, very attacking move by Dan Schwartz, Harry. Striker on for a defender. And again, um, yeah, looking to as he capitalise on the numerical advantage and try and keep pushing forward and getting that, that third goal. He's a good player to come off the bench too, Donkers. He said, uh, knows where the back of the net is. Slides, 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 slides,
Kaipara. Well, pressure on Lidiket. Well, Aaron Scott back in the heart of defence. Oh, and uh, Colotti's picked this ball up off uh, Ryan Lawrence and Cashmere holding on, but uh, Melville knocking on the door. Yeah, Cashmere just really failing to get that, that ball clear. They do now through Luke Tung. A couple of players have gone down, just Sean Lidicott. Oh, oh definitely, yeah. definitely so. Yeah. Yeah, that knee's heavily strapped. Yeah, just that right knee you see. Well, he's actually signaling maybe the, it's the hammy on his left-hand side. Well, this is bad news for Melville. Former New Zealand under-23 and under-20 international. And uh, Jacob England will be the replacement for Lidico. Well, that would probably see Sean Lidicket on the uh, on the treatment table for weeks possibly depending on how bad that uh, that injury is but hammies are always so so difficult and so sensitive yeah two to six weeks if you're lucky just talked about earlier what he already had a reshuffle at the back this afternoon Melville Is Lawrence. Well, as long as it's just a goal in this, Melville aren't out of things. But uh, the problems keep mounting for them. That's the problem. Down to 10 players, the loss of Sean Lidicote. A couple of uh, chances that they missed that really they should have put away. Some brilliant goalkeeping from Danny Knight too. Lapsley, Sam Richards, Lyle Matheson. Oh, and that was uh, a little bit sloppy, but Lapsley has made up for that uh, error. And now Coughlin is through. Oh, that is a superb goal. Garvin Coughlin. Beautiful finish by the Kashmir frontman. Measured, controlled, perfect. Well, what a lovely goal from... Garvin Coughlin, lovely ball from Lapsley. Aaron Scott looking for the offside, looking to the referee's assistant, but you just can't deny the, what a classy finish from Coughlin. Harry, how many players would have tried to finish that with their left foot? And then Coughlin just lifts it with just the right foot. Constantly just lifts it with his right. Lovely goal. You see a lot, a lot of the top strikers when they do get on that sort of position. You know the keeper's going to come out and try and, try and spread himself, and it's just a, a delicate, just a dink, you know. And that one was yeah, more than delicate; it was exquisite. Well, Cashmere now in total control. They lead Melbourne United three-one. Two goals for Garvin Coughlin, one for Jacob Richards. Time. Galetley for England. 
Fun to row the steps the ball, but he's managed to find England again. Good skill from the young substitute. Lagos with an early ball in. That's not bad. Colotti, header on target. Yeah, lovely ball from Lagos. Hung that one up for Colotti. Fortunately, it just wasn't enough pace on the ball. It was what a loopy cross. It was coming down, and he had to try and generate some power to get it past Danny Knight. Well, we saw this from Melville United last week against the Phoenix. They seemed to labour for great periods and then came to life right at the end. And Melville United have shown this in different, different parts of the game today. To, that they can create chances and, and test Kashmir. But in terms of assembling a full performance that's consistent, they've uh, come up slightly short. Melville under all sorts of pressure as Kashmir tried to add to their total and a double substitution coming up. Well, two players being prepared by Dan Schwartz, uh, Lockie McIsaac and Declan Tyndall. Lockie McIsaac, uh, of course, from around these parts, having uh, played for Melville United in 2018, also with Waitakere and Birkenhead. Two spells with uh, Melville United, in fact, so this will be uh, something for young McIsaac to savour. Kashmir have caught Melville out. Oh, that's a great ball. Matheson blocked by Kaipara. Danger not over. Melville are on the ropes. Here's Kalotti. Lagos. And Jacob England, have they got some end product? Good ball in, but the run from Ryan Lawrence was to the middle of the six-yard box, and that was bent in just to the far post. Well, the two players coming out for Kashmir, Aiden Barber Ryan and Sam Richards. Barber Ryan's played well. So too Sam Richards. McIsaac and Tyndall. Join the fray. Must be something with hair buns going around. Gordy at this time, there's about three or four players with them this afternoon. I am in utterly no position <laughs> to criticise anybody for their ability to grow a man bun. Other than to say, Harry, I, I note your remark. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking at <laughs> across at you, Gordy, at all. No, it's not about me. It's all about the man bun. So just under eight minutes to go. Melbourne United 1, Kashmir 3. Searle with a long throw. Donkers goes to ground and wins a free kick. You got it, you got it. 
Well, a victory here for Kashmir will lift them into fourth place temporarily. Wellington Olympic uh, currently on six points. Uh, Kashmir would be on six. And uh, featuring Auckland United and Napier City Rovers who are each on five. So the Birkenhead Wellington Olympic game will be of great interest to Kashmir after the efforts here in Hamilton. That's well played by Kashmir to get out of trouble. McIsaac and Schwartz combining. Coughlin. Oh, he's really given Raheem Hunt a difficult afternoon and Lapsley running all the way himself and straight at the goalkeeper. Had an option to lay it off to Garvin Coughlin. Chose to go on his own. Yeah, lovely ball from Coughlin again. Lapsley cutting inside on his left. And again, Max, Max Tommy down quite comfortably. So I apologise, that was Declan Tyndall. Starting to lose track of uh, the Kashmir players with man buns. <laughs> Kaipara nicely played Searle that's a throw towards uh, Kalotti and uh, Kashmir in danger of switching off again well, there was a shout of, uh, for a penalty, but uh, Luke Gardner said, no, the ball was the first contact. Coughlin against Kai Kaipara. Well, it's going to be a successful return to Kashmir action for Tom Schwartz. As Matheson has a pop from distance, not far away. That's a decent effort. It's a very good effort from Kyle Matheson because the defenders just set off him for a, for a second there. Aaron Scott trying to throw out a leg, but oh, Matheson with a, a nice strike. Lawrence. The game becoming very, very scrappy in the final stages as uh, Donkers goes through and he's taken down. That's another and one. Luke Searle's already on a yellow card. And it's a second red card for Melville United. They're down to nine. That was a straight red. Well, this is goes from bad to worse for Melville, doesn't it? Well, Donkers clearly on on target, well, running on to goal. And Luke Searle already on a, a yellow card. Gave uh, referee Luke Gardner no option, really. Well, Chester Gaskin comes into the action for Jacob Richards for Kashmir as they line up this free kick Lyle Matheson lifted it over the Melville wall and just wide of the target about 10 or 15 minutes ago and he stands over the ball again with Luke Tung will he fancy it again or will the Kashmir defender have a pop Perfect angle for a left-sided strike, isn't it? There's Matheson against the wall. Declan Tyndall battling with the Lagos for possession, and it's come back to Tyndall from an offside position, however. I think Dan Schwartz is going to be very happy with these points, Harry. Yeah, absolutely, away from home as well three goals and two to your, your key marksman too 
Kevin Coughlin. Sixth home defeat for Melville this calendar year in the league. Uh, they were also beaten by Waiheke United in the Chatham Cup at home, 2-1. Well, with nine players on the pitch, uh, Kashmir must fancy another goal, maybe even two. And Coughlin's on a hat-trick as well, so I'm sure with two minutes plus stoppages and a numerical advantage, I think he'd be, be keen to grab himself another one. Well, we, we understand it's five minutes additional time Plenty of time for Kashmir to add to Melville's woes as Matheson swings in this corner. Easy for Tommy. Nicely played by Alex Ballard. Tongue. Brian Lawrence working ever so hard. Uh, for not much... Uh, Reward. So confirmation, five minutes to go. Additional time. It's been the type of game you wouldn't rule Melville out from scoring. They've created chances, they just haven't converted them. The other thing is they just haven't, I don't think they've, you know, they've clearly had a game plan to try and get the ball over the, the top of Luke Tongue and get Christmas and Rose, particularly in the first half. Campbell Brown, when he he was on the pitch in the second half, that substitution started the game well down that left-hand side as well. So they've de definitely got a direct approach this afternoon, Melville. They haven't really been able to change that tactic when they've needed to. This is good work by Declan Tyndall. Coughlin and uh, deflected. It hit uh, Kaipara, I think. Corner for Kashmir. Well, Coughlin, as you said, just on a hat-trick here. Yeah, just trying to bend that one into the far corner of Max Tommy. Oof, and that was met at the near post. With plenty of power, no direction. Well, Kaipara fouls Lapsley. Yeah, Lapsley clearly late with that challenge and yellow card for Quentin Kaipara. Here's Sam Lapsley. Space opening up on the right. It's uh, Tyndall running at the Melville United defence. Now Sam Richards goes outside of Lawrence. It's decent. But Kashmir can't capitalise on that moment. Yeah, nice run down the right-hand side for Kashmir Technical and just unable to get his... Uh, Knee over that one to keep it down. That yeah, was good work by Chester Gaskin, the substitute, playing in that right back position. Here's Matheson. McIsaac. Lapsley. Gaskin. Coughlin pulling all the strings for the team in yellow. Picked off by Lagos. 
Now Colotti. Aaron Scott. Beautiful pass by Scott. Chance. And it's uh, lash wide of the target, but uh, that wasn't bad from Melville yeah, on a difficult afternoon for them. A lovely ball from Aaron Scott. Beautiful measured pass. Brian Colotti. In the end, Jacob England. Just getting all his angles wrong. Yeah, it was good defending from Luke Tung as well, arriving just in the right moment, awkwardly. Schwartz. Ballard plays it back to Schwartz. As we tick towards the end of the five additional minutes, it's Melville United one, Kashmir Technical three. Melville with two red cards today. Substitutes. Campbell Brown, and that's saved by Tommy, oh. and shot goes over the top. It's deflected over the top. It's a corner. That was his chance. Gavin Coughlin to secure a hat trick. Nice work, too. Was it Coughlin? I don't think it was Coughlin, was it? No, no it was uh, McIsaac, the uh, former Melville player. He got on the end of uh, Kyan Donker's shot that was deflected. I couldn't see the man bun. Sorry, Gordy. <laughs> And that's the final whistle here at Gower Park. Kashmir Technical have picked up their second win of the season. Welcoming back Tom Schwartz. Three goals to one. Jacob Richards opened the scoring. Two for Garvin Coughlin. Ryan Lawrence was on target for Melville United. Kashmir temporarily up to fourth in the table. And uh, they have emerged victorious. Final score here at Gow Park. Melville United 1, Kashmir Technical 3. Well, thoroughly deserved, Gordy, this one. Kashmir Technical. I think clear, with the clear chances throughout the course of the game, I think they just, as I said before, they just have that extra bit of, bit of class or a bit of guile up front with Coughlin and Matheson. His pace certainly caused some problems at times for for Cash, uh, for for Melville. Then the end, as you said, Melville did have their chances, but they just fell away, didn't they? Those two red cards didn't help either. A thoroughly deserved Kashmir technical. Well, half time in the match between Birkenhead and Wellington Olympic in the capital. Wellington Olympic lead by a goal to nil, and confirmation that at three o'clock today, the third match of the fourth round takes place. And that is at the Christchurch Football Centre as the Wellington Phoenix take on United. Tomorrow, big games all round. Miramar Rangers seeking to change their fortunes when they host Auckland United at David Farrington Park at one o'clock. And Auckland City FC host Napier City Rovers at Kiwatia Street. The first time in 28 years for Rovers to play in the National League at that venue. Here's how the table Looks after that result. Kashmir, as I said, up into fourth place temporarily. And uh, Melville United, it's looking grim for them. They are now hoping that Auckland United will do them a favour tomorrow, perhaps, and knock over Miramar Rangers. Well, that's all from the Waikato. And on behalf of Harry Nata and myself, Gordon, Glenn Watson, it's been a pleasure describing the action to you. We'll see you again next time.